Good afternoon and welcome to the TWIS1 review. Um, today is uh, Saturday, July 9th. And um, I had everyone's TWIS graded, but six of you uh, coming into today. So I'm sorry for the six of you who had to wait. Now what you can do is go into My Grades. And uh, when you see your TWIS1 grade, if you click on it, it'll take you into the actual test and then you can review. And what I've done is I've made the correct answers available now and any feedback I might have written. I haven't written a lot of feedback, but I am going to review a few of the things now. All the objective questions you can look at, email me if you have a question. But as for the writing, what's very important, because you'll have to do it on the next one too, a lot of people are kind of missing on these five, name the speaker, name the work, use one of these terms to explain why this is significant. You aren't really explaining why it's significant. Let me give you an example. In the first one, which begins, Make me, O Lord, thy spinning wheel complete. Many of you noted that that was uh, Edward Taylor, and that was from the poem Huswifery, and that it is an example of metaphysical conceit. All good. But then you said it's an example of metaphysical conceit because he uses a spinning wheel to compare, um, as an object to compare to his spirituality. That's not why it's important. That's why it's a metaphysical conceit, but that's not why it's important. So I need you to dig a little deeper and think about and make connections between the type of writing that is, the Puritans, uh, American literature, and that kind of thing. So in that answer you might have said something like this is significant because while at first glance comparing one's spirituality to a an everyday item like a spinning wheel seems absurd, but uh, but on closer glance, you know, maybe the idea that a spinning wheel was so common in the Puritan home and that that was a perfect way to kind of connect to people. They really understood what a spinning wheel was, so therefore they could understand something really complex and deep like a, like your spirituality through that example. That might have been one way to answer that question. And just think about, and what other ways is this significant? You could think about how the Puritans in their plain style. Maybe the poem didn't seem plain style to you, but certainly choosing an everyday object like a spinning wheel might be related to that. So these answers have to show me not only that you've identified the passage, the speaker, and um, uh, and the device being used, the literary device, but that you sort of make connections and dig a little deeper and look at why that's significant. The second one begins, so I took my Bible, etc., and many of you recognize that was from Mary Rowlandson's The Sovereignty and Goodness of God. Um, and that was actually an example of a conversion narrative. I tried to give you hints in the TWIS review that I was going to use that term, and I didn't maybe have that in some of the notes as much as I should have. Um, but a conversion narrative uh, has to do with sort of a losing faith, so to speak, and then refinding and recommitting yourself to faith. And so um, that was an example of a conversion narrative. Now, why is this significant? You could have used the idea of the Puritans' use of typology because there were so many references to the Bible and how those were indicators of meaning in her life and things that were happening to her. That would have been maybe something you could have done. There are other ways, but again, you want to ask yourself, why is this significant? Not why is it a conversion narrative. I know what the definition is, and so do you. You identified that, but why is this important? Okay, third example. Um, uh, there, uh, that they were always, you know, with the one foot. This Many of you recognize Jonathan Edwards, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, and this is an example of a Jeremiah. Now, why is that significant? You know, and again, you would have to say, okay, why is this Jeremiah form significant? It sort of reflects the Puritan mindset, the idea of original sin, the idea of sort of using fear uh, to get people to act right. You know, am I one of the elect or not? And what can I do about that, you know? So um, so that was number three. And number four, uh, the answer is that as experience testifies, and this was the one that talked about the freedom of conscience, and uh, we can serve God as we see fit and uh, let each believe whatever he is able to in his own way. That's very not Puritan, <laughs> you know. So that was Daniel Pastorius in his letter to his father. And this is an example of pietism. And uh, pietism isn't what some of you thought it was, which is like, oh, you're just real holy. It is the idea that the individual uh, can have an individual sort of relationship with God and can worship as he or she, she sees fit. And that's a very Quaker ideal. And that's in stark contrast to the Puritan ideal. 
And the last one was from Anne Bradstreet's to her father with some verses beginning, My stock's so small. And again, this is a metaphor. And many of you identified that as such, but why is that significant? Well, she uses these financial terms to describe her father and her relationship with her father. And so it would make sense, you know, then that this reveals a little something about the uh, Puritans' ideas about gender roles, with the, the men being the, the breadwinners. Uh, that fits in with that well. Lastly, there was that essay question about the Native Americans. And, uh, and again, I'll encourage you, because I was looking ahead to TWIS 2, and there are five. Identify the passage, the speaker, and tell why it's significant. Okay, so again, why is this important? Not why is it a metaphor, or why is it a metaphysical conceit, but why is it important in our study of American literature in this time period for this type of writing, for whatever. Then the, uh, the essay question, you do, uh, there are two or three essay questions on TWIS 2, actually which I'll reveal to you ahead of time like I did this time. This one was about the Native Americans and what cultural practice or natural phenomenon was explained in one of the stories. And then you talk about why that was important to uh, that culture, how that revealed something about them and the way they looked at the world. So for example, in the Lakota tale, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but in one example, the Lakota tale, um, the smoking of the pipe, and then there was the female deity who was very powerful. And so, um, and so this d demonstrates the Lakota's um, importance they place on ceremony and ritual, the smoking of the pipe, and also reveals a little something about how they looked at gender roles. To have a female deity, period, was pretty um, amazing, and then also to have her be strong and powerful and be sort of like a conduit to the divine. That indicates that, you know, I guess women were well respected and maybe looked at on somewhat equal terms with men. So those are a couple of things that were revealed in that tale. If you look at the origin of um, folk tales, um, the Seneca tale, think clearly in that one. Some of you noted the importance of nature because a rock, you know, and that kind of thing had power, but also mainly the importance of um, storytelling. He who knows the, the history and is able to communicate it to the people is, is he who has the power, he who is transformed. And so, um, so those were the kinds of things I was looking for. I didn't give a ton of feedback, and usually I have answers prepared, you know, stuck in there for, you know, correct answers, but I didn't on this one. So I wanted you to know um, where you fell a little short if you didn't get the scores you were looking for. And I hope that you'll uh, take some of this advice and apply it to your, your next TWIZ experience, which will be coming up sooner than, than we all think. Um, it is a fast-paced semester. Last thing I want to say, grades. Grade Center is not cooperating with me, and uh, I have hidden your current average grade because I can't get that thing to calculate your grades correctly. And uh, went from some people having like 40% who shouldn't have a 40% uh, to them having 175%, which again, you shouldn't have 175%. So, you know, I'm not sure what's happening there. Give me some time to work on that. Your scores for your individual assignments are posted and are correct. And uh, I'll try to get that calculated column fixed up for you so that it will reveal, you know, your current average. Last thing is, um, I said that was the last thing, but uh, your projects. I, I can't wait to get to them. As far as I'm concerned, the due date was Tuesday, and that's when I start grading. And uh, I haven't started at all yet on those, but I'm going to get those done for you in the next couple of days because I know you want feedback, and I don't blame you. So I uh, hope you have a great uh, rest of your weekend, and I'll be checking in with you again soon.